feeling that a black artist like her was encroaching on a genre that she did not belong. Today we're taking a deep dive into the whirlwind of controversy surrounding Beyonce's unexpected foray into the heart of country music. With her groundbreaking single, Texas Hold'em, Queen Bay shattered records, not only clinching her first UK number one in 14 years, but also ascending to the apex of the country music charts as the first black woman to hit number one. And yet, within the clamour of her chart-topping conquest, a deeper issue unveils itself, exposing a form of gatekeeping around the genre and what many would argue is implicit racism and a challenge to our entrenched assumptions on the genre's origin. As country music becomes a canvas that everyone wants to paint on, propelled by its meteoric rise in streaming numbers, Beyoncé's daring leap begs the question, is she merely jumping on the bandwagon or is she in fact spearheading a crusade to reclaim a genre deeply entwined into the cultural fabric of black America? The lefties in the entertainment industry just won't leave any area alone, right? They just have to seize control over every aspect, don't they? Now, as much as Texas Hold'em is a huge hit for Beyonce, it's also become a hugely controversial and divisive song. And that's something we need to unpack. Despite her Texas roots and previous nods to her country heritage, Beyonce's crossover single ignited a firestorm of online outrage among certain country fans. They took to social media with a ferocious sense of moral fervour, demanding its removal from the airwaves, arguing that Beyonce simply was not country. A country music station in Oklahoma, KYKC, refused to play the song, even after fans requested it. The station's manager's rejection was blunt. We do not play Beyonce, as we are a country music station, totally dismissing her new release. The level of vitriol became so great, country music queen Dolly Parton released a statement praising the song, something many would argue was an attempt to squash the mob mentality. But what underpins this critique? Is it a genuine concern for country purity, or is it grounded in something more profoundly sinister? Consider this, Post Malone donned country-inspired attire while performing a folk version of America the Beautiful at the Super Bowl, and Lana Del Rey hints at her own venture into country music, yet when Beyonce steps into the arena, she encounters huge resistance. Got to, uh, they've got to make their mark just like a dog in a, uh, in a dog walk park, you know, every dog has to mark every tree. Is there double standards at play here? K.Y. Casey refusing to play the song ignored the fact that Beyonce has always been a country girl at heart. She played at the CMAs in 2016 with the Dixie Chicks, performing Daddy's Lesson, which was submitted to the Grammys and rejected. Even Candace Owen acknowledges Beyonce's country roots. Why the selective and convenient amnesia when it comes to Beyonce's past? And why does she endure disproportionate levels of scrutiny compared to artists like Kenny Rogers, who transitioned into country, or Taylor Swift, who for years experimented with a rather suspect country twang? Well, one fundamental problem is the general consensus regarding the origins of country music is wrong. Well, let's say half wrong. For decades, country has been painted as a genre firmly rooted in white America. Yet the truth, like the US overall, reflects a melting pot. Ever wondered why the fiddle reigns supreme in country music? Well, Scottish and Irish immigrants brought their fiddles to North America, igniting a musical revolution. These immigrants also introduced highly energetic dancing styles, paving the way for country square dancing during the Irish potato famine, which killed more than a million in the mid-1800s. A massive wave of Irish immigrants fled to the US, bringing their customs and beliefs. And if you listen closely, you'll hear the echoes of traditional Irish singing in the ornamentation of country music, such as keening, which almost sounds like Irish yodeling, or Shano singing, which is built on interpretive runs and riffs. But this is only half the story. 
Within the Appalachians, these Celtic traditions merged with African-American blues and gospel that engineered a unique sonic architecture based on the diverse people of the South. Did you know the banjo, synonymous with country music, is not a white instrument? It was brought over from Africa during the slave trade and as late as the 1840s was a segregated item viewed as exclusively a black instrument. During racist minstrel shows, white audiences were introduced to items such as the banjo and it was unintentionally popularized. Country music would not exist without black America. And this hidden fact has become a lightning rod for controversy. Why? Because it undermines the status quo that the genre is a white invention for a white market. The hymn When the World is on Fire was arranged by a black minister. It was then adapted into the Carter family's 1928 hit Little Darling Pal of Mine, which was then turned into This Land is Your Land. Black influence has been systematically erased, and that's not an accident. Consider the controversial case of Little Nas X's Grammy-winning country rap single, Old Town Road, originally included on the Billboard country music charts before its removal. The industry's explanation citing a lack of conformity to the vital country music elements, which doesn't acknowledge the broader implications of cultural erasure and exclusion. Little Nas X or Beyonce's experiences are not individual problems. They underscore a deeper issue, the whitewashing of country music history and the systemic erasure of black influence. Tina Turner faced claims of self-induced whitewashing when her 80s solo career moved away from her previous R&B and soul sounds and into more in-your-face rock and roll. Some critics claimed Turner was abandoning her authenticity by adopting the style of the Rolling Stones when in fact Tina was helping to reclaim rock and roll, a genre built on the influence of black arts from gospel, boogie woogie to the blues and influenced heavily by black musicians such as Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, Big Mama Thornton and Little Richard. Reflect on the fact that Beyonce, who called Tina the Queen, at the 2008 Grammys is rumoured to follow her country album with a rock album. And many would argue she is picking up where Tina left off in continuing the struggle to reaffirm the actual history and influence on these music categories. So does Beyonce's bold journey into country serve as a potent reminder of its genuine roots, reclaiming a space for all voices in the genre's narrative? I'd love to hear your thoughts and if you like this video I have a whole series analyzing the intersection between music and race in the 90s career of Mariah Carey. Thanks for watching.